G'day legends. Uh, thanks very much for joining us on the final video of the year. It's been a good year. Uh, we're really happy with how far we've come. Um, we set ourselves a goal at the beginning of the year and that was to do a video every single week this year, which we've completed. It's extremely hard to do that. Um, it's been quite stressful at times, but we've got there. Uh, a lot of things that kept us going through is, um, you know, all your comments, uh, liaising back and forth with you guys, meeting, meeting a whole new lot of people. It's been awesome. And next year, we're not doing anything different, guys. Our aim is to put out a video every single week this year for you guys and see how far we can take out of line. Next year, we really wanna focus on growing our outer line brand. So uh, especially our merch, it's something like we're very, very passionate about. You probably see it all the time, how, how uh, much effort we put into our clothing and those who have purchased, you know, you see the quality, you see how the comfort, you see our wet weather gear, the new shoes, like everything. Um, we're just, you know, we really want to make this work as a brand and grow it as much as possible. And with your help next year, who knows what we can be doing uh, this time next year. I want to give a massive, massive wrap to our sponsors. Without them, a lot of what we do wouldn't be possible. We're very uh, lucky to work with such awesome companies. And I want to just, you know, they're, ooh, we're going to massive storm rolling in and it's about to smash us. There's actually hail out there. But anyway, our sponsors, not only are they sponsors and they work with us, they've become really close mates. Like I said, without them, uh, we wouldn't be where we are today. So a massive thanks goes to uh, Kale and the boys from EC Off-Road, Davo and all the legends down at Revolution Power, Timmy, Brock and the boys at Hot Tackle, Alan, Tony and all the crew at Marine Care, you guys are a bunch of legends. You've kept our motor in tip-top condition for the, last, for the last few years actually and we've never had a drama touch wood. Brent and all the boys down at Sea Addicts Boats, I've got a bit of news coming up about that, but they are an absolute bunch of champion blokes, a lot of integrity, and they build an absolute awesome boat and trailer. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that very shortly. And first light fabrication. Gus and the boys down there are putting out some insane products. And like I said, everyone we work with, we have now become really good mates. We talk on a regular basis and uh, Look, I look forward to continuing the relationship with our sponsors next year. All right, guys, a quick little um, thing about next year and what we've got planned. So Sylvie, who's sitting just outside that window, our uh, 1500 Chev, uh, will be going up for sale in the new year. Uh, it's, it's with a heavy heart that I say that, actually, because she's our pride and joy. We've spent a lot of time with her. We've taken her to Cape York. You guys have seen everything we've done. Look. We want to put a lot more money into our business, into our brand and stuff like that. So we're going to make a few big changes there. So we're putting Sylvie up for sale uh, in the new year. Soon after that, guys, our beloved boat, who I have uh, received hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of messages uh, in the last 12 months about, will be going up for sale also. And that literally gives me goosebumps saying that. Um, it's going to be really hard watching that boat drive away. I almost feel emotional talking about it, but it's going up for sale in the new year. And we are getting a Sea Addicts boat built, 6.5 metre hurricane by Brent and the boys down there. And I'm pretty excited about that. I'm nervous about selling my boat. I love my boat. It's perfect for what we do. But what we've got planned with this new hurricane, uh, we are going to build what we all think is the perfect all round boat. This is going to be a weapon, some stuff that you haven't seen before on this boat. I'm really excited about it. Brent's really excited about it. That's getting started in February, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Apart from that, guys, we're gonna grow out of line as much as we can. Like I said before, we really want you to help spread it, grab the gear, whatever you can to help is just awesome. It's really getting out there now and we're having such a good time with it. Apart from that, we're gonna just be pumping videos out to you guys every week. We're gonna to go to wherever we can in Australia. We're gonna bring you guys some awesome four-wheel driving, fishing, camping content, a little bit of cooking thrown in, and a lot of laughs like we always have. But anyway, guys, let's kick off this very last episode of 2023 with our very first episode. We're gonna run you through all the best bits. It's gonna be good, stick with us. First up was the menace himself, Willem Powerfish.
You're gonna have to jump from the top. Yeah, oh, this might be our okay. What? Yeah, I'm just trying to push it off. Oh. 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 Hey, How are you? Huh? Been time. about <laughs> 20 years. I thought you said you knew the area. I do know the area. Why are we stuck on a sand? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, guys, good morning. I've already picked him up. Alright, you guys might know him as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you f***ing know me. <laughs> We're going to do a bit of censoring on this one, that's for sure. It's going to be beeping everywhere. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, for the kids. Because you've got families children. watching and stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. all good. That's oh, all good. Mate, it is what it is. You just be you. Dog of a Let's go fishing. Oh, what are we looking See at? See this here? Yeah, what is that? So there's all pipes and concrete and stuff oh, like yeah. that on the left. And then we got it on this one here. A fish up here. Ah. All right. So... So we're sight casting, essentially. Sight. <laughs> sight. Sighting, then we're going to cast it out to them. You're just showing everyone your marks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you've literally got to go to university to learn how to use we got, it. <laughs> we got fish here, mate. See that? I don't know how you can tell that. Like, they're just... Well, g'day, guys. Just a quick reminder. We've got a brand new website. <laughs> wow. That's incredible. Put your finger in there. Nah, Those off. guys put the mud crab yeah, in that's their nostril. And you won't nah. put your finger in nah, his mouth? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Not touching it. <laughs> Couple of big ones. Show me. Come in the mangrove. What do you got? Snapper. Told you. Oh, nice. Oh, that's a beauty. Yeah, we got one. You do the catch and f <laughs> get the sand. Yeah, no, that's a nice flatty. It is, bro. <laughs> Unreal. You been out here long? Since about six. Okay. Is that the only one? Yeah, we've lost a few. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get him at the right time. Yeah, we're good luck. Oh, no, we're right. Look at this. Live action. Put your back into it. Into it. <laughs> hey, mate, grab him from behind. Give him some support. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Right, well, that was an interesting day with the man himself. But anyway, it was good fun, a lot of laughs, and you guys really liked that video. It was a lot of feedback. It was good to see the real Willem. Um, and yeah, one day, hopefully, we can do it again. Next up, we went fishing in some old haunts that me and my dad used to fish at 30 years ago. I told the story in the video, and we cast netted this big mangrove jack. I said it was this big, but it was probably more like that big. 30 years ago, I hadn't been there since. Me and Sezzy went there, and this is what happened. Oh my god, it's a jack, sir. It's a f***ing jack. Are you serious? Um, have a look at this. What? It's a jack. No! Are you actually serious? I told you this place holds jacks. He's a keeper. <gasps> I told you! <laughs> Strip bait. Two. I can't what? Actually, like, <laughs> actually speechless. Like, is this actually for real? Mate, Jack. What? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> then we had this ridiculous idea that we wanted to catch a bluey of a kayak. There aren't really any rules. You're just, <laughs> you're just out on your own. Right, oh, you're out on your own. Fending for yourself. Okay, yep. Um, Am I, do we tell each other depth or we have to actually look and paddle off and stuff? No, I reckon, yeah, no, nah, you just, I don't no, know. you just fend for yourself. All right, all right, that's it. Well, all I'll tell you is we're in seven metres right here. Okay. And the reef is that way. <laughs> all right, that's all I'm telling you. Because, are you going first? I thought we were going to flip a coin. Right, oh, where's first? your bag? Uh, underneath. Okie doke, I'm going to let you decide. And if you get it right, you're in the kayak. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, heads. Oh, I'm nervous. Yes. Tails. <laughs> I'm losing already. Oh, damn. I don't know what I'm more worried about, Lee, being left in the boat on my own or you going over in the kayak without, like, I don't know. Oh, now you get to see my trick. Oh, you... have you got a trick? Yeah, I was going to cheat a little bit. Of course bought, you were. I bought a depth sounder. <laughs> <laughs> it 
let's have a look down at the bottom and see where I was. <laughs> how are you going to do that? That's how, they ca that's how they spot trout up north. What? With a sight glass and they go, oh, yep, three trout down here, boom. Yeah, okay, good luck bending over the side of the kayak to use right a bloody depth sounder. Well, we're going to get the, this Titanic-sized kayak out of the boat now, so bear with us two seconds. If she gets one from the boat, doesn't count. I can see her over there, probably 200 metres away. Does not count from the boat. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah! these ones definitely what we would prefer to keep they're good chuck him in the box kids will be happy pretty sure I'm getting swum here don't know though very small if it is it's been going for a bit so I don't know whether to hit him oh this fella's got a fish uh oh pretty sure I'm getting swum here don't know though very small if it is it's been going for a bit, so I don't know whether to hit him. Oh, this fella's got a fish. Uh-oh. Yep, getting a look in here. Here we go, here we go. Yep. Yes. Don't mind, buddy. Oh, yeah. Oh, Tusky from a kayak, people! <laughs> <laughs> How bloody good's that? <laughs> My GoPro's starting to fog up, it's that hot. Hopefully it doesn't ruin the footage. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get this fella off. That was great fun. Another one biting here. Come on, mate. Give me a shot at ya. I don't think this is enough to take the, ooh. Ooh, here we go, here we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yep, yep. Oh, boy. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Oh, get in, get in, get in, get in, get in, get in. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. GoPro ran out of battery. Well, that was awesome fun, that one. Me and Sez still say, well, that was one of the funnest videos to do. Um, we did it all after dropping the kids off at school and before picking them up, we had the whole thing finished. Turned out really good. But it wasn't all fishing action, though. At Outer Line, we try to cater for all sorts of audiences. Uh, the older people, young people, kids. We try to teach uh, uh, you guys a lot about fishing and, and life and the history. And this one about Peel Island, this was uh, uh, one of our most popular videos also. Oh, he's really buried himself. Yeah, he has. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was just cruising along the bank there. A little fella. <laughs> I've never seen that like this here before though. Yeah, I know, look at it, it's beautiful. So there you go. Keeping your eyes peeled again. He's a little, little man. He's gonna go and swim. <laughs> Straight back down there. Oh good. Jeez, you wouldn't think it's windy. Hey, but the wind's dropped. Look at the butterfly next to you. Well, that's a lot better now. The sun's coming out, it's beautiful. Some really cool flora or fauna, whichever one means vegetation or greenery. <laughs> but anyway, we've got a fair walk ahead of us here. Oh, it's good firewood there. After a one and a half kilometre walk, we got to this sign and a big gate saying restricted access. This colony is the only intact colony of its kind in the whole of Australia.
I tried to make a few phone calls, but I was unable to gain access on this day, which was extremely disappointing. Hey guys, um, all right, so you wouldn't believe it. It's been six weeks since we were last here. Um, it's taken us that long to gain permission to get into this place. We corresponded with the QPWS and Kayak, which is a Kwandamuka indigenous people who own the land. After back and forthing and chasing people around about emails and stuff like that, they sort of, um, they were really good at the end and they were very quick to return our emails. But yeah, we finally got access, which is awesome, doing it the right way. Uh, we've got about a two kilometre walk. Yeah, not looking forward to that. Got the old shoes on. Got a good mate of mine here, Mickey. He's in his thongs. Says he's at work today. Unlucky for her. But we're going to head up and have a look at this place finally. Haven't been here for 22 years. So it's going to be cool to see what it is. Oh, this is, this is Mickey, everyone. Hey. <laughs> so, as I said, I'm getting into me spearing. And this is the man who's going to teach me. Oh, he's a good Spiro, so I try to. Eh? Yeah, you'll see him in a few more. But you said you were up here, it's still standing. So like this was a lazarette. This was a leper colony from 1907 to 1959. So our parents were still alive while this was a running colony. Crazy. I later learned that these tiny little huts were used to house the indigenous patients suffering from leprosy, a brutally harsh environment for anybody to be subjected to. They were no more than five feet tall at the edges. Wow, look at this. How crazy is that? It is legit looking, eh? Like <laughs> when you think of an, an outdoor loo, that's exactly Yeah, man, that's an outdoor loo. Yeah, well, Peel Island's a very, very special island to me. I've fished at it uh, since I was a little kid. It means a lot, holds a, a place in my heart always. And um, I, I really enjoyed doing that, that film. So that was good. Rightio, then I decided to turn out a line upside down and take up spearfishing. Thanks Adam. Hi, I'm Dr. Mike from Dr. Matt and Dr. Mike's medical YouTube channel. Let's talk a little bit about breathing. Did you know that your stimulus to take the next breath isn't due to a drop in oxygen levels in your body, but due to an increase in carbon dioxide levels in your body? What's going to happen? <gasps> What you'd find is the oxygen levels will drop quite slowly while the carbon dioxide levels rise quite quickly. As you can see here, I'm using the skills learned in the pressure project course to breathe up, slow my heart rate before I dive down. Now diving down, equalizing, I don't know why, but I've felt it a lot easier to equalize with my snorkel in. And a habit I have to get out of really quickly is forgetting to take my snorkel out when I get to the bottom. You can see here with my rear end floating up in the air, I'm a little bit underweighted, but once you get over 10 meters, that uh, positive water pressure, it really starts to push you down. Just uh, checking in with Mickey here, letting him know I'm all right while having a look around. That was my first dive I decided to do without my spear gun just to see how everything was going, make sure I could equalize properly and everything worked pretty well. Feeling confident in my breath hold and my gear, I decided to start taking the spear gun down in the hope of spearing my first fish. It was really pretty cool to see what was under these pylons and just all in between them. Getting used to equalizing and diving down and then holding on to the bottom and relaxing in that turbulent water while you've got five kilos of lead strapped to you. While anything could be around you and also trying to keep your shit together to try and spear a fish is something that was sinking in pretty quick for me. Putting all these things together is a lot easier said than done. You can see here that the current was really starting to pick up by now and a lot of sediment in the water making the visibility a lot less. I was starting to think here that my chances of shooting a fish today were really, really low. So it more became about getting comfortable with my gear and comfortable with diving at depth and, and getting used to holding my breath for around that minute mark. Here I was at about eight metres and I looked to my right. In between all the columns, I could see uh, what I knew was a mangrove jack and quite a big jack at that. It would have been close to 600 mil long. I tried to stick my gun in to have a bit of a shot, but he moved in further. 
So I tried to stay patient, I even tried to flick up a little bit of sand, but I couldn't get him this time. But as they do, my GoPro stuffed up and missed one of the most important parts of my spearfishing that I can never get back. The GoPro let us down. Ooh, <laughs> 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 oh, so the GoPro's giving us curry, but how's this for a first fish to spear? The boys spotted him. So I turned around and he just turned side on. Boom. <laughs> Cannot yeah. believe it. Yeah. To breathe up like this, and know that I was going to dive down and have my first experience with a bull shark. Uh, yeah, it was pretty daunting for me, but anyway, I thought, stuff it, let's just get it over and done with. <coughs> and sure enough, here he comes. I quietly shit myself here and he literally got close enough that I could have just gave him a little poke in the nose. Not a big fella, only about six foot, but still enough to give you a bit of a scare. Not even knowing Mickey was there, he come in behind me, gave the shark a little poke just to let him know, hey mate, we're not food. Bit of a thumbs up and uh, we're ready to roll again. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good footage, man. <laughs> yeah, the bull shark swim up to him. <laughs> I only just caught out the corner of my mouth again. Oh. On my last dive here, you'll see me stop in my tracks, turn around, and start coming back up. This is what I seen on my view. Diving down, I seen a big shadow come from down below the ledge. This one, a proper bull shark, about eight or nine feet long. This was enough for me to come up, hail the boat like it was a taxi, and get the hell out of there. There's a whopper, that's, that's a bit bigger than five foot, that one. That one's probably like about eight, nearly nine foot. Straight down on top of it. Yeah, because I've seen the golden ones, I'm like, oh, there's some big golden and then I've seen that thing, and I'm like, dang, that is a pretty decent bully, that one. Now, that was about a year ago, not even a year ago, maybe 10 months, and spearing is still a massive part of my life. I love it as much as I love fishing. It's taken me to some really cool places, and I've speared some pretty cool fish over the last year as well. Uh, the boys that uh, I've, I've met through spearing are just a bunch of absolute legends. I've been mates with a few of them for years. Um, so I want to just say a big thank you to Breno, to Joshy, to Pete, and especially my good mate, Nicky, mate. You are absolute legend. Um, you know, these are all mates for life. And uh, I've, I've just loved spearing with you guys and everything that we've uh, caught together, all the laughs we've had. So thank you, thanks for looking after me, and I'm looking forward to the year ahead. All right, and then we gave away a scooter. Jeffrey bloody Dharma. I can't believe that we took Jeffrey Dharma fishing in our very own boat. <laughs> Good one. Oh, hey. You met our friend Jeffrey Dharma? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Get it up to him! <laughs> Come on, Jeff! Oh my god, I've never seen it so busy! It's pretty busy, eh? <laughs> Far out.
Jeffrey Dahmer onto his first fish since being convicted. Nice, Barky. Yeah, codes. That's a cracker, mate. Oh. Big beauty. That's a nice big grassy sweet lip. That's a really good one. Well done, mate. So what'd you do? How'd you get it? He's gonna flick out of your hands 100%. No, got him with a good grip, man. No. All right, Jeffrey Dahmer is on. <laughs> Cage has got a fish here. Look, he, he just sits here for an hour, then I'm like, have a fish, Cage. Drops line, boom, straight on. See what it is, so you're calling it. Bucket mouth. Says he's on here. There, yeah, mate. Well, baby red. Yeah. Hopefully we can meet a couple of his grandparents tomorrow. There you go. That's a good pearly codes. Not bad. Hmm? Not bad, but barrel. Ow, he's by the fingers. Yeah. They just uh, give it a little bit of a kick at the start and give up, basically. Yep. Let's go. All right, you guys know a lot about Cody and Bordo. They've been on a lot of our uh, films. They're two of my best mates. Uh, we talk all the time, we stay in touch all the time, and I love them. They're, they're like my brothers. So, boys, if you're seeing this, I love you. I look forward to everything we do together in 2024. You guys have been a massive part of the, our channel and our lives. And um, yeah, just wanna say I love you and thank you. Oh, we pushed through some pretty shitty weather this year. My knuckles feel it, my back feels it, my knees feel it. And uh, yeah, we pushed through some pretty crappy weather to bring you some pretty awesome content. What's the matter, Cody? <laughs> You're having a lifesaver now. Your mouth is purple. Two o'clock in the morning. Big storms come outside. Gonna throw a bit of a dampener on the trip up north. There you go. <laughs> so good. straight into a mother. Monster. He's a man. No, don't. That for a Venus tough fish. It's a better one? Yeah. It's your biggest, eh? Yep. <laughs> ah, conditions probably don't look too bad, but sitting on reverse, so. Red. Is it? Yep. Yeah. Oh shit, is that a shark? The shark's all under him. Red. Yeah, we got one past him! How big? Legal. There we go. Finally. It's not a big fella, but he's a keeper for sure. That just shows if the sharks would leave us alone, we'd get a few more of these. There was two sharks chasing this fella up. But, um, so happy just to get one in the boat, eh? Yeah. We tried so hard today, like. 
And then we went up and spent a bit of time with our good mate, the Griffs. Nick and Cass, Zaki and Brooke, you guys are absolute legends. We had an awesome time with you. We always have an awesome time with you guys. Here's the action that happened. Oh. Wow, wow, wow. Have a go at this. How good is this, Says? So good. <laughs> so we made it. The Griffs, I reckon they'd be, they'll use these two yachts here as a gauge to go to the northern side of them. And then he'll probably come in reasonably close to this bank here because you've got this little one out here behind me. So he'll come in reasonably close through here, probably about 60, 70 metres off the beach and just come straight up into there. Wow, it's Jump just changing board, so much. Jump on sleep the night and get yeah. out early. That's it. Searching and searching for craze, I just couldn't see anything. So I started to focus more on the fish. It looked like quite a fishy area around here. And after searching for a decent fish to spear, for quite a while, I decided to give up. Not before, I did one more drop, just to try and find something for Sarah to use as a strip bait. All right guys, I've got to set the scene just a little bit here for you, all right? Because for me, this fish is truly a once in a lifetime fish. My last dive, I went down and I decided not to press the button for the first time in 30 dives. Uh, all I was gonna do is just try and spear a flesh bait for Sarah and us to use before we went out deep fishing. I took one more breath, I dove down and I was swimming along the top of the rocks by about a metre. Now, not too long before this, I'd watched a video from Adreno on how to spear Spanish mackerel. Without that video, I might not have got this fella. So I dove down, I was swimming along the bottom um, with nothing around, no fish, bugger all, little tiny fish like this, that's it. Until I seen to my right a bit of a shape. I looked to my right and I seen this Spanish mackerel, which I knew was big, didn't know it was this big. As soon as I seen him, I looked forward because if you turn your head and look at a Spanish mackerel and try and turn for them, they're gone like lightning. So I quickly looked forward and I just kept him in my peripherals off the side. I uh, was swimming with him for about 15 seconds parallel. He's about five meters to my right hand side. As I was swimming, I could see him starting to cross over into my path. I started to raise my gun really slowly, just keeping an eye on him. He come closer and closer until finally he'd crossed straight in front of me. I was looking straight in his eyes and I realized this was a really big Spanish mackerel. I raised my gun straight up, trying to aim for his spine and boom. Got a big Spanish here, whoa. Did he spear it? I think he speared it, he just needs his toe in him. His toe in him. Yeah. Have you got it? Yep. Okay, pass it to the girls, the gaff. I uh, put the rods or even Zaki. <sighs> Grab the gaff, mate. <sighs> Hurt. You have to lift him in, says. Don't drop him. Lift him. Watch out, Brookie. Watch out, Brook. Brookie, it's all good, Doug. Yeah, I got it. Oh, 
Here's that. Spanish. I'm so wrecked. It was towing me through the water. Yeah, buddy. How good. That's so sick. Yeah. I told you something crazy always yeah. happens. <laughs> All right. It's my first Spanish mackerel <laughs> on a spear gun. How's this? I can't. I seriously, I can't believe it. I can't it's fit it in the frame. Me. I can't fit it in the frame. <laughs> I don't even know what that's gonna weigh, but that was just the craziest fight. It was towing me through the water. I couldn't reel it in. It took all of us to get it up into the boat. Nick had to gaff it through its head, and I'm the only Spiro in the water, so we couldn't put another shot in it. It's, it's just massive. It's a massive fish coming close to his head. Look at this. <laughs> So oh. oh my god. Oh, I just gotta, I gotta put it in. <laughs> feel how heavy it is, Nick. Yeah. Feel that. It's oh. so good. Spaniardo! Ew! <laughs> <laughs> good boy. Is that your biggest spano? Uh, probably close, yeah. He... Says he's hooked up too now. Mayhem! Well! Trainer on deck! Spano there! There's another one! Spano? Coming at us! Oh, he's gonna jump on me! Oh, no! Lost him! And Mum's braid! I'll go to the right and give me a little gap, mate. Oh! 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 All right, now one thing I wanted to do my whole life is spear a crayfish. I've always wanted to spear a crayfish. I've seen boys rock back with them years ago. I'm like, how do you get craze? They go, you need to spear, you need to dive to get them. It was one thing I wanted to tick off my bucket list and I think we did it. We did all right, hey? How's that, Morton Bay? <laughs> all right, well, I don't know about you guys, but that looks delicious to me. We took you camping at some of the best places in Queensland with some of the best crew. Pork, it's starting to render very nicely there. We got the lamb on now, some gidgy and some uh, mangrove charcoal in there. And then we've got fire going here. Oh, look at that. Well, we added a couple of camp ovens to that. Six camp ovens full of delicious vegetables and Clino took care of the rest. There's more lamb there obviously. That pork's incredible though. Hats off to the chef. And then... Good job, sir. You're very welcome. Thank you for the to the Sorry, supplier. Joe. <laughs> <Go. laughs> yeah. Thanks, Joe. You have plenty there. We've got eight. Oh, you're, you're a vampire. Oh, yeah. Adam Foley, you're not going back for crackle, are you? <laughs> Why are you lingering over here? I haven't done nothing. It does look good, but <laughs> do you want your bit of crackle, Lil? We're good. I, I'm getting my dad's food. I'll have your dad's. I love good camp.
Well, here we go, folks. It's time for the boys to sneak off for a couple of hours, see if we can catch some real fish. Well clear enough to spear here. Well, it's hard to believe that right now I'm in a creek because you'd swear that this was 50 k's out at the Great Barrier Reef. Absolutely stunning. With all sorts of different corals, reef fish, just full of life. I could not believe it. You wouldn't read about it. There's even a little coral trout getting around. Look at this cute little fella. They gotta be the best looking fish on the planet. I also found the mother of all Moses perch honey holes. Have a go at this. Hundreds of the fellas come flying out of this one little bit of reef. We decided to move offshore and have a look if we could chase a couple of big fish. So we use the tactic that we do at home just get the main boat to tow us around looking for a good bit of ground. Really not very fishy around here, it's surprising to see. And after being towed around for about 15 minutes, apart from a couple of mowong and sea perch, etc., we decided to move out a little bit deeper and see what we could find. Once again, I forgot to hit my GoPro on one of my last dives and I had a school of about 20 Spanish mackerel swim straight past me. This one was the biggest of the bunch. Did you spear the Spanish mackerel? You've got to get it to the boat. There's about 20 of them. Once again, I didn't press the button. We had a big school of Spanish come past me. This fellow here. He was the last one of the school. Not a bad Spanish. <laughs> So yeah, anyway, I made a mess of your boat, mate, sorry. It's all good. <laughs> First blood in the boat. Yeah. <laughs> Happy days. A bit moist, mate. Yeah, I do. <laughs> well, we were keen as to spear a good reef fish to take back. So we headed well south of this area to another little group of rocks that we know in a bit shallower water. First impression, it was bugger all fish again. But the amount of turtles here was mind blowing. I didn't film them all, but I had turtles swimming all around me. I could literally pat them if I wanted to. Fantastic looking ground here. I just can't believe there wasn't more fish. This fella just sitting down here, minding his own business. to be the 20th turtle I've seen, I reckon, this one. But then, the fish that I'd been waiting for and chasing the whole time appeared. Now keep your eye on this little area here behind this rock. You can see him just here, that blue color, unmistakable.
I knew straight away that this was a big, big bluey. It was looking very skittish, so I had to be quick. Boys had only just finished saying to me, geez, they'd love to see a good sized bluey, so I couldn't believe it when this fella came out. He's like, hurry up, hold me. It's a good fish, don't lose it. <laughs> this little crips, he was holding my tail, don't worry about it. Tell me my GoPro's running. Yes. <laughs> Holy God, that is a horse. Yeah, the boys. <laughs> All right, then uh, one of my more nervous videos that I did was diving in a new area um, that I had fished heaps with says pushing the boundaries of depth and what I could dive, knowing there was sharks around. Yeah, this was a really tough one, but we did it. Here's some of the action. Well, here we go. New spot, first dive, very nervous. As I said before, this is the deepest I've had to dive so far. Knowing the two boys are up there watching my back makes you feel, well, as safe as you can anyway. My main concern was getting to the bottom, keeping my heart rate down, and hopefully run into no sharks. I'll say it time and time again. When you get to the bottom, all that disappears. You just concentrated on one thing, fish. Here's Pete's first dive. And Pete, doing what Pete does, he doesn't come up empty handed. There's a nice sized tusky sitting just below him. He goes down and makes a shot. Look at the power these fellas have got. With a spear the whole way through them, they still pull 20, 30 metres of line and nearly hole you up. Mick drops down, makes sure that Pete's shot is good, which it is. And there you go, five minutes in, our first good sized bluey. That didn't take long. <laughs> well, my second dive. I dove down, kept my eye on this Moong here, waited to see if something else come in which it did. An absolute cracking size bluey. He spooked at first and I tried to stay calm. Then he presented himself and I took a shot. With Pete catching the action from above, this fella put up a hell of a fight. I tell you what, you're pretty gassed when you get up after diving that deep, shooting a fish, then fighting it the whole way up. He's a good fish. Oh. He come in, had a bit of a look at me. He took a little dart away. They're pretty deep here, so I didn't want to stay down there for long, but uh, he come in close, gave me one more shot at him, and yeah, got him. <laughs> he put up a fight on the way up, but I'll tell you what, I'm gassed, so I'm gonna catch my breath, go back down for another dive.
descending to the bottom straight away, another good bluey. And then I got to go away with this legend. Where are we up to? <laughs> no up idea. To, uh, hang on. This said about Mazda, I think. Yeah, that? yeah. Oh, oh no. That wasn't me. It was no, you. No, you had it sitting there. It was fine before you said it. Oh, it wasn't me. <laughs> he sat his beer on the. <laughs> Anyway, um, how quick are you? Is your, bum, is your bum? <laughs> Last night I said, "Don't sit in the dip." Uh, <laughs> he where, sat where in the he dip. Put the dip right under my ass. Yeah. Hey, we've had to move because the wind was getting a bit painful there. All right, we found a heap of new ground up north, searching in some new areas and caught some amazing fish off it so far. This episode, I went up, we visited my dad, and we went fishing. And dad's building uh, a little paradise in paradise. She goes. Help her. Help her. Help her what? I don't know. Get him. Ah, she just got around. absolutely Get nailed. Get him. Holy shit. Did that just smash you? Yeah. Get it. Don't go easy. Oh, Adam. I'm trying. Is mate. it snagged? He's got you buggered. Holy shit. Lucky I was holding on to that. Yeah. Yeah, go, go. Oh, good fish, says. Very good fish. Got him now. Yeah. He's blue. And he's big. And we got him. The bluey queen strikes again. <laughs> oh my God. And the new rod. <laughs> and the new rod too. That guy's getting Oh my God, he just <laughs> He didn't even bite. Holy shit. <laughs> That's a good one, Sissy! <laughs> Holy oh. shit! <laughs> All right, there you go. How's that? That's a heavy fish. That was, was that fun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we call it fun. Uh, All right, once again, she's done it. Can I have a go? Or Dad, <laughs> any of us? I'm going to put it down. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Look at that face. Look at that. Oh. Look at that eyeball, yum. Yeah, it's all yours. <laughs> Here, I want to drop him. We've been cleaning the boat, he's disappeared for like 15 minutes. Thought he was looking for knives so we could fill up the fish. Rolls out, he goes, I'm turning up the heat on these bastards. <laughs> Rolls out with a 900 die wire. That's an old die wire, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> with new big bent butts in a bubble, bubble wrap. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'm going to get the rod, he says. Oh, far out. Rightio, and not so long ago we took you guys with us to experience some of the craziest top water fishing that anyone in the top water game fishing industry has ever seen. And that's not from my mouth, that's from theirs. South East Queensland, Australia, where the salt runs thick in our veins. We set off in pursuit for the prized yellowfin tuna. Little did we know, this day would mark a chapter in our lives we'd never forget. Renowned game fishermen saying it was the greatest day of top water fishing they had ever witnessed throughout the world.
Out to the left, out to the left. Oh, yep. I was right there, I got it all. Watch the lines. This one doesn't know it's hooked yet, eh? This doesn't know it's hooked, eh? Oh, oh no, is that next to it or yeah. right? Slow, real slow. Real, yep, one's there. Slow, mate, real slow. They're coming up after it. Oh, wow, they just yeah, shot off. Yeah, I see it, whoa. Wow. In the boat and chase these ones, but they're coming our way. Look, out this way, look. They're coming our way. This is a big workout. Oh, he's got it! Yes! Got it! Woo! <laughs> Dropping right here in front really, of the boat. This is a really big one, guys. This is a really big one. I've got a really big one on here, Foley. Yep. What's well, your line out that way, Kale? Wow. Insane. And I'm going to be on here. Double hook up. Come right up. What was about to happen was exactly what we come out here for. Look at these things. Man, oh man, oh man. Come on. Oh, double double. <laughs> Come on. Tuna. All right, and over the last few weeks, we've bought you videos about hooks in legs. Here we go, walk out in front of the chair, buddy. Show us a good cast out, ready? Whoa, ah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah. Oh, did that get you good? Oh, oh no. Ow. Oh. That's not a good cast. Oh, oh bro. Ah. Technical difficulties. Stop, go away. Took Sezzy to face one of her biggest fears, and that is shipwrecks. Hey. Very uncomfortable. How are you feeling? <laughs> very unnatural. Look at this. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, this is going to be funny. All right, let's get in the water. We braved some horrible bloody weather. So took you to paradise. And last but not least, just last week, we taught you to catch snapper like the pros do. And that's not me, that's the actual pros. Wow, wow, have a go at this. 82 centimetres. I've got one at 67, one at 69, and one at 82. Look at this. 
apologies about the rain if you can hear it, but it's like proper storming here at the moment. So that's it guys, that's not even half of the episodes of what we bought you this year. We put out about 46 or 47 new episodes from January until now. I just thought I'd pick a few of the key moments that stood out to me and says. Once again, uh, I'd like to thank all of you guys uh, for watching all our videos this year, commenting, sharing, liking. That's what gets us through. That's what keeps us going. Our sponsors, you guys are amazing and I'm looking forward to the year ahead. Our Patreons, you guys are unreal. You're always messaging us. You're always supporting us by buying our merch. You contribute financially to our videos. Each and every one of you guys on our Patreon community, honestly, you guys are bloody awesome. We appreciate the support from you guys so much. That's about it, guys. If anyone stayed around till the end, you're a bloody legends. It's New Year's Eve. Probably nobody's watched this whole video. You're all out partying, but maybe on the first, you're sporting a hangover, and this is gonna come in very handy. Legends, thanks again from me, says, and my family to yours. Happy New Year, and let's get stuck into 2024.